the wild world of Ted V. Michaels. The Wild World of Ted V. Michaels, a 2008 or 2009, I think it was released on DVD in like 2009, and I think on Amazon Prime it's listed as 2009, but 2008-2009 documentary on the life and work of famed exploitation grindhouse director Ted V. Michaels, the creator of The Corpse Grinders. And Blood Orgy of the She Devils, and uh, Girl in Gold Boots, MST3 case staple, uh, Girl in Gold Boots, and my God, the Astro Zombies, and uh, and then all those movies he made in kind of the, the late uh, 70s and, and early 80s, the Ten Violent Women, and 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 all of that stuff. It's not as well known as Astro Zombies and Girl in Gold Boots and uh, the Doll Squad, the Doll Squad. My God, the Doll Squad, the the precursor to Charlie's Angels, and the the whole story of how Aaron Spelling, the creator of Charlie's Angels, saw the Doll Squad, and then and then made his own movie. Great documentary. It was long overdue. Uh, a documentary about Ted V. Michaels. Ted V. Michaels has always been a personal influence and inspiration, and I think he has been to to many filmmakers. The first time I saw Ted V. Michaels was on the Incredibly Strange Film Show many many years ago in the early 90s when I was a, a young kid. And uh, I've talked very frequently about the Incredibly Strange Film Show. That was the first time I saw these grindhouse exploitation filmmakers such as Ted V. Michaels and Herschel Gordon Lewis and uh, Ray Dennis Steckler. And Michaels really fits in with, with um, Herschel Gordon Lewis and Ray Dennis Steckler and all those guys. Though he seems to be somewhere... He's somewhere in between, you know? He's... And, and I think, you know, he's, there's been much talk of Ted V. Michaels over the years, primarily, I think, over Gold Boots, Girl in the Gold Boots, and Astro Zombies, and The Corpse Grind. He's only made a few movies that people go, wow, I really want to watch that. And I think he just always falls between, he's not like Andy Milligan. He's not like, oh, he's like unwatchable. But then he's he's closer to Ray Dennis Steckler in that he gets caught up in his own personal interests and obsessions, and he's not as celebrated as somebody like Herschel Gordon Lewis. He's definitely not as celebrated as those East Coast guys, Herschel Gordon Lewis and Dave Friedman and Doris Wishman and Radley Metzger and 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 all the you know all the guys that we were talking about in uh, the documentary. On uh, Herschel Gordon Lewis, you know, at, with Ted V. Michaels, it was all about the kind of the personality. The guy wore a rhino tusk, and about the the panache and the flair and the the uh, filmmaking credo and the 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 uh, masculine energy going forth and making these these movies, uh, and 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 all of that stuff, and. Uh, and I, and so, yeah. But I mean, he survived everybody. You know, when when everybody had already retired, he was still in in the early two thousands making these movies. Uh, so the the whole documentary, which by the way is narrated by John Waters, there's a through line in the history of American exploitation film, and that is John Waters. He's like the historian. You know, he's like you could. You know, you could almost see John Waters as like, uh, you know, sitting on, if this was like ancient Greece or Rome, that would be like John Waters sitting on a hill with like some stone tablets wearing a toga, and he'd be lecturing to people about uh, the exploitation filmmakers. And in 1968, there was a release of Night of the Living Dead and the Corpse Grinders. And then, you know, you just see him like as this like philosopher, you know, uh, telling people the 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 Sermon on the Mount of uh, exploitation. The Pope of Trash, John Waters, narrates this film, which was directed. This this documentary was directed by uh, uh, Kevin Shawn Michaels, the same guy 
who uh, who did uh, who who directed the Vampire movie, the Vampire documentary from a few years ago that was pretty good as well. So the wild world of Ted V. Michaels tells the whole story of Ted V. Michaels. Ted V. Michaels from St. Paul, Minnesota, uh, always interested in magic shows and magic tricks, moved to Bend, Oregon, and got involved in the film production and in Bend, Oregon, and shot his first film, and moved to to Los Angeles, where he made, uh, he edited the film that he shot in Bend, Oregon, a film called Strike Me Deadly, and it was this black and white kind of thriller about snipers in the woods, and and all kinds of stuff, and then going on throughout the, the 60s, getting involved with many other people, uh, you know, and his his uh, his his triumphs in the in the late 60s and the early 70s, the films like, uh, as I said before, uh, The Doll Squad and uh, Astro Zombies and uh, The Girl in Gold Boots, and uh, and then his his whole thing with the Castle Ladies. The Spar Castle in Glendale, which uh, he he shot uh, his uh, Blood Orgy of the She Devils, and uh, Roger Watkins has an interesting story. The guy who who made Last House on Dead End Street, where he he Roger Watkins is a real New York based filmmaker, and he was going over to to uh, to Europe and showing up in the 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 lawn of like Freddie Francis and everything. <laughs> He was he was a crazy guy and he got involved in hammer films but he went on to the west coast and he and he um I think he 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 showed up for like a day on the set of uh of uh of Blood Orgy of the She Devils and I don't think he was really impressed <laughs> but Roger Watkins is crazy. He he has a great story story about uh, just Ted V. Michaels. I wasn't impressed, and he was talking to some actor on a set and he seemed like an idiot. And according to Roger Watkins. But that's an interesting story, and uh, and so I guess he's most well known now for you know the whole castle the thing that he had this big mansion in Glendale, and there were these women who stayed with him. It's always kind of glossed over in the documentaries, and it's and the question is never really asked of like he it, it was a it was a supposedly he says there was no funny business going on that he was mentoring these young ladies and and uh, and all this stuff. But why not mentoring young men? You know why not mentoring young guys? Why is it uh, a, a household of you know like between you know a dozen half dozen women uh, at any time in the castle? And he, they never really ask him that. And but he talks about in the movie how he made this movie. He made this kind of work for hire movie about this this guy Alec, who is this famous poly, polygamist. He made this movie called uh, Alec and His Wives or something. And he then he talks about how he when he was a young guy he he had always heard that a man would have could have seven wives or had seven you know women that and he wanted to find that and. But then he's always like, oh, you know, all those ladies at the women at the castle, there was no funny business going on. I don't know what, he's like, we lived as a family, we took care of each other, we did this, I mentored them, he, they worked on his films for free, they acted in his films for free. And you know what, I, I and, there, and there have been articles and stuff where people kind of go, uh -huh, I'm sure Ted was, you know, uh, I'm sure Ted was doing, you know, uh, bed hopping. And, but I don't think so. You know, Ted V. Michaels, I, over the years, he's, uh, you know, been one of the nicest people. Uh, he was one of the nicest people, always, uh, very friendly, okay with giving, he gave me an interview. Uh, he was the first director that I ever interviewed for my podcast. And I think his kindness and his warmth and his strength of character and his morality, I think anyone, and even me speaking with Ted V. Michaels for a little over an hour, and I'm sure, and all the interviews that I've, the, vol, the, the voluminous interviews that I've read with Ted V. Michaels over the years, speaks to, and of sure, and of course, that's pro, that's promotion. And some pe somebody can, you know, obviously somebody can, can do an interview and be a different person behind the scenes. But I think just given the, the high volume of interviews over the years and the people who've worked with him, I've never seen anyone say anything bad about him. 
bad about him other than his movie sucked or, you know, we, we did a movie and it was really hard or difficult. But, I mean, I've never, I've never had anyone really call him. I don't think he was a creep or a bad guy. I think he had a lot of moral character. And I do believe him when he says that there was no funny business. I'm sure that he probably lived with these girls in the house as kind of like, kind of like sister wives, but, but it was not, but it was in a, in a more, not a, a sexual way, but a more of a, a, a emotional living day to day relationship with people. And I started thinking about this. And so why not bring guys into it? Because apparently he didn't like to have, you know, you know, uh, husbands or boyfriends there. And I, I, you know, I started thinking about it and I, and I think that, you know, when you start bringing guys, when you, when the guys can stay over, when you go co-ed, I think, and I've seen this happen on film sets too, and little movies that I, I've made, just people showing up every once in a while, is that people start. When, when you bring guys into it, you bring, you know, emotional relationships, you bring sexual relationships, and somebody likes somebody else, but that guy or that girl wants to do something else with somebody, and people start getting jealous, and people start getting weird, and, you know, you start bringing guys over, and, you know, it does get, you know, a, a little weird, and that's presupposing every relationship is hetero as well, but... At least when you're not going co-ed, you can kind of take a little bit of that complexity out of it, especially if you're living in a house with people. Maybe the idea of keeping it very, you know, just keeping it all women might have made sense. In this modern era, it would be a total scandal. It would be this total crazy thing. And even back then, I think it was probably uh more of a more less of a real thing and more of this more of his he he always liked to tell tall tales and so um i don't really you know the reality of the castle ladies we'll never really know if it was if it was real or if it was like maybe two or three women at some point you know you know over 10 years maybe you know, a dozen people every once in a while would stay at, stay at his house and it became, it, he conflated that into this harem uh, of women that he had, you know? So he always liked to tell, tell tall tales. He always, he, he envisioned in his mind that he would have a house full of women and maybe the reality was a little more like, you know, every once in a while somebody would stay with him, you know? And maybe he had a wife or a girlfriend who would stay there. And but I mean, I, I, probably the reality was far more um, uh, kind of realistic and and smaller scale than than what the, the stories that he's told. Well, I mean, the the eighties, the eighties kind of was uh, the death of the grindhouse, the exploitation films. A lot of guys, Herschel Gordon Lewis, and and. Uh, Dave Friedman, Radley Metzger, Doris Wishman, a lot of those people, as I said, were, you know, retiring by that point. They were getting a little bit older, you know, they were getting to their 60s, a lot of these uh, filmmakers. And uh, Ted, Ted V. Michaels just kept going on. He moved to Las Vegas because there was a, a group of financiers who uh, promised him millions of dollars if he moved to Las Vegas and uh, he spent months moving from California to Las Vegas and then he kind of got stuck in Las Vegas and the financing and everything kind of fell through. And so he's kind of there in Las Vegas and, uh, you know, he set up a, a television production studio, film production studio there, started doing commercial work, like, you know, and started shooting movies throughout the, the, the 90s and early 2000s uh, in Beta SP. Now, when, when I talked to him and I, I did the interview in 2005, I think he was doing this movie, Heart of a Boy. And uh, he's shooting it on uh, Beta SP. And uh, he made a bunch of movies like Dimension Fear, uh, uh, made some Astro Zombie sequels. And um, 
and uh, then died just a few years ago. He died in 2016. Uh, he, was, he was 87 years old. And uh, and uh, I, it's an interesting story. I mean, the the, the Ted V. Michaels move, story is a is a story full of bluster and promote and rhino tusks. And uh, MGM offered me three million dollars, but I turned it down. Aaron St Spelling stole my story and made uh, the, the, the Charlie's Angels from it, which I, I kind of believe. But Ted V. Michael strikes me as a guy with a lot of guts, with a lot of character. It was an inspiration to me as a young kid. I'm sure he's an inspiration to many young kids. His movies are kind of like, they've always struck me as he's kind of more a traditional filmmaker. You know, he wasn't, a, he, he, he embraced the gimmick. I mean, you know, Corpse Grinders is a gimmick movie. Astro Zombies, to a certain extent, is a gimmick movie. But he he seemed more of just into traditional action, suspense, drama filmmaker. And, you know, it wasn't like the Herschel Gordon Lewis anything for a buck, you know, that it, it felt like... If it was illegal, if it was legal to like murder small animals and film it, like Dave Friedman and Herschel Gordon Lewis would kind of be okay with that. I mean, not, not that they're totally amoral, but in a sense of everything, just you know, they're 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 they filmmaking kind of reeks of this kind of kind of anything for a buck sensibility, just a huckster kind of thing, and. There is something that Ted V. Michaels, beyond the promotion, beyond the bluster, there is a kind of morality to his work. And he didn't embrace the nudity. I think that's also because he's more of a traditional filmmaker. He's more of a, he comes out of the 50s and the early 60s. And so his, his movies don't have a lot of the requisite exploitation. And they have a little bit of, of violence. They're more violence and action than sex. And Herschel Gordon Lewis and Dave Friedman, even though they like to kind of, oh, you know, and, and they made they made their X-rated movies. I mean, they want to pretend like, oh, they never did. Their shit didn't stink. They didn't make uh, hardcore movies. And, you know, though they though they would do cameos in hardcore movies and they're all their friends were making hardcore movies that, no, they didn't want to get involved in that. Their shit didn't stink, you know. But Ted V. Michaels really walked the walk. I mean, he I mean. I don't really think his films really had any extensive nudity until like in the in the 80s when he tried to make that mission kill fast and he, and he took he spent like a a decade doing it and uh it does have some nudity in it but that was really I mean like he made a women in prison film 10 violent women and there's a shower scene where everybody's wearing their bra you know <laughs> there's a sh you know and uh he did stuff like that where they would be totally naked and uh and I think he um, he was a good guy. He was a good guy, and he, and, and uh, I think he's kind of I think his good guyness has has made him I think a little less shiny in the world of exploitation. Though I think he had the last laugh, and he still was able to make films, possibly films of rather dubious quality, throughout the uh, '90s and 2000s. But he was still able to do it. And he was able to keep on keeping on until really, uh, until he dropped dead. And I think that's what everybody wants to do. They want to keep on keeping on where they got to mortgage the house, where they got to move into a little thing uh, and, and still keep going until you, you, uh, you drop dead. That's the motto. That's the thing. That's the, the life goal. So uh, Ted V. Michaels, uh, wonderful filmmaker and a wonderful uh, little documentary and look at his life. I loved it.